The looming recession is making headlines in America and around the world. But the question is, is this season divinely appointed by God? God is going to allow the economies of the nations to tank. And when the Lord does it, it will be a period of a transfer and a transition within the world and within the body of Christ. Come on, somebody. There's a special message coming up from Apostle Joshua Giles about the economic downturn and why it's providing a window of opportunity for the church. Plus, how is this recession going to be another test for the church? And as the markets tumble, what can you do to be prepared? And guess what? Pastor Connie Brooks is in the house. I'm telling you what, listen, you better stop everything you're doing right now because there's a word in the house and she's gonna break down the wisdom and insight and how you can not just survive, but thrive. Are you ready? I sure am. Signs of the Times, how to recession-proof your life starts right now. Well, we're so glad you're joining us for Signs of the Times. We're talking about what God is saying in the prophetic now. We wanna provide you with prophetic and a spiritual perspective of the days we're living in so you can be prepared and know what to do in the days ahead. Listen, the state of the markets are making news all around the world, but what does this shaking mean for me and for you? Coming up on this show today, you're going to receive prophetic insight from Pastor Connie Brooks and Apostle Joshua Giles about why we're in a season of testing and what are God's marching orders for the body of Christ. Well, the question is, what's God speaking? How is he trying to get our attention with this economic downturn? I want you to take a look at this video from this amazing man of God who's making headlines all around the world. He's got a word for us, and I want you to listen to Apostle Joshua Giles and what he's saying about what God is doing in this economic downturn. The Lord said to me, uh, get ready for economic changes all around us. You've heard me, some of you that follow this ministry, you've heard me uh, sharing this for some time now. But the Lord said to uh, say it again, uh, God is going to allow uh, the economies of the nations to tank. God is going to allow, and some people are not going to like this word, but I'm going to say it anyway. I've been sharing it, but the Holy Spirit said, say it again. God is going to allow the economies of the nations to tank. And when the Lord does it, it will be a period of a transfer and a transition within the world and within the body of Christ. It's going to be like suddenly, uh, even though these things have been happening over time, it's going to feel as though suddenly uh, the uh, economies of nations and the monetary systems of nations are in transition and they are in travail. When this happens, the Lord said to me, tell the people to rejoice. He said, when uh, they announce a recession, and I've shared this word over the past two years, but the Lord said, say it again. Uh, when they announce a recession, the Lord said, tell the people to rejoice. He said, because what I'm doing, it's not going to make sense in the natural. It's not going to seem like it lines up in the natural. But in the middle of a recession, you are going to expand and you are going to increase. In the middle of a recession, the Lord said, you're going to step over into a Kairos time. You're going to step over into a suddenly where the Lord's going to allow the, the prices of things to come down drastically. You're going to see the prices of property come down drastically. You're going to see the prices of houses and land come down drastically. You're going to see commercial property come down. You're going to see houses that they were building for some. Uh, people are going to have to step out of the deals because uh, uh, for this time they cannot afford it, but then uh, it's going to crash down. And why would the Lord cause um, the prices to come down? Yes, we've seen inflation all around us, and we've seen hyperinflation 
But the Lord said, tell the people to rejoice because you're going to see a plummet in this natural system. And when you see the plummet, it is a sign of another wealth transfer. And when you see the prices begin to tank, some of you where the land would have cost you uh, $3 million, it's going to be cut in half for you. You're going to get it for a steal. Some of you that have been expanding in ministry and you're saying, Lord, how are we going to take the new territory? The Lord says, I have ordained a recession in order to transfer it into your hands. And somebody's panicking because they're saying, well, Lord, you know, well, what about the interest rate? And what about all of these things? And the Lord says, I'm going to use what you see in the natural to cause you to expand and increase spiritually. You're going to rejoice in the middle of a recession because the Lord is moving and you're going to see wealth changing hands. Now, somebody should rejoice over that word right there. It's already happening. It's already happening, but you're going to see it accelerate over the next several months. Uh, the latter part of this year is going to be a, a very difficult and challenging time in, in the world's economy. But for the church, for those that are within the kingdom, I'm talking about believers, you are going to expand, you are going to increase, and you're going to walk in a place called wealth so that you can help advance the kingdom of God in your community, in your sphere of influence, and in the places that the Lord is pushing you into. Get ready to expand. You will be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of living water. And in your prosperity, you shall never be moved. That's right. Welcome to Signs of the Times, y'all. Mm. This is a place where you get a chance to hear what God is saying in the prophetic. Now, listen, you can't look at what's happening at the economy through a natural lens. That's why God has sent prophetic voices here for this moment, so you know how to gauge the moment. This, this show has on it uh, the anointing of the sons of Issachar. They knew how to discern the signs and the times. And this is why we are here. And I am so excited to have with us Pastor Connie Brooks from Plum, PA, right homegrown in our own backyard, a voice that the devil's got to reckon with every day. And I'm so glad that you get an opportunity to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying through her. Pastor Connie, it's so good to have you. It's good to be here. I'm excited. That clip really got me excited. You know what? The devil's what, fighting. Oh, my goodness. We know, but it's the right time. We're in the right time in the right season, and we are the right people for Amen. what God is doing. Amen. And I'm so excited. You know, I heard in my spirit, as he was ministering, and I hope you caught this video. Listen, DVR, because I'm telling you, you're going to be drinking from a fire hose here. So you're not going to get it all right now, but there's so much that's going to come forth, and you're going to need to download this into your spirit. You're going to have to break this down a little bit at a time. And as he was talking, I felt the Lord speaking to me, saying, this is a time, Pastor, yes. for divine reversal. Oh my God. We cannot look at the natural to determine no. what God is doing. No. But he is going to use the natural economic downturn, the rise of inflation, the recession we're in, in order to bless the body of Christ. Absolutely, it's time for the church. Yeah. It's time, when we talk about the transfer of wealth like Pastor did, the fact is that it's time, it's the time. Everything God does has a timing connected to it. And it's time for the church to be that bread basket that we are mm -hmm. the ones that God is gonna allow the money, he can trust us with it. He's been preparing us for this. This is not going to be like a, a surprise moment. He didn't wake up this morning and say, oh, the no, this has been in the mind and the heart of God that his church would be the light, would be the salt. And he's mm -hmm. going to give us everything we need to be that. You know, you said something just a little bit ago while we were talking, watching during the clip, that Joseph, this, this, first of all, this recession and famine and all these things didn't take God by surprise. He had prepared Joseph 30 years before it ever happened. Yeah. How do you think God is preparing, had, let me say not preparing, has been preparing people yeah. for such a time as this? Well, God's working behind the scenes all the time. It's not like it's a surprise. And so when you look at Joseph at 16, getting the word that he would be, a family would be bowing to him, he would be a leader. It's not until 46 that he actually becomes an administrator, but all the time, look at all of the testings. Mm. 
So anytime God gives you a prophetic word, mm -hmm. there are devils, every level, there are devils connected. <laughs> every time God gives you a word, the enemy is going to come to do, try to distract you. The Bible says many great work were not done because of unbelief. Mm -hmm. The devil wants us not to believe God, getting to a posture of complaining and frustration and anger and bitterness. So when God is ready to move, we're not positioned to mm. move with him. Mm. But when we know that testing comes with every prophetic word, if you give a word, you might as well say, okay, what's gonna happen here? Yeah, yeah. Because I know if God's given me this, the enemy does not want this word to manifest. And so when we hear the word recession, it's like, okay, what, what we're gonna do now, God? Mm -hmm. You know, and God is saying to us, go back to, go back to my word. Whether you go back to Genesis chapter 26 and see what God does with one man in the middle, it opens up, it was a famine in the land. Mm -hmm. Genesis 26, open that. The first thing God tells us, there was already a recession going on. Yeah. So recession is not nothing new. God has dealt with that. And so when you open up that chapter, you see that there's a famine in the land, but God gives instructions. And he says to him, do not go down to Egypt. Do not go to the world system. Mm -hmm. Stay in Jira. Mm -hmm. I am with you. I'm going to go with you. And from the time God says that until the end of that chapter, you see God walking him through every test when strife came, when envy came, you see God moving him through everything. So wow. we have to be aware of that. And it's no different in America. I was just saying the kingdom of God still stands at the end of 45 presidents. Yeah. There have been recessions before, 1945 to 1949. We had a recession. At the end of that recession, Pastor, they talked about 2 million refrigerators being sold, 2.4 wow. million cars being sold. At the end of the recession, it shows that how so many people became wealthy because like he said, land's going to be cheap. Yeah. Cars are going to be cheap because it's a recession. Yeah. And that's when God is saying to my people, use wisdom. Stop spending frivolously so that when doors open, you can walk through and become a blessing. The church will have what it needs to be a blessing because God has allowed us to be the bread basket. Mm, my good God. Now listen, ladies and gentlemen, I, I, she just gave you a little taste of this right here. <laughs> and we've got a whole lot more because I want to go into how God is using, I, I want to even change it a little bit. I feel the Lord is saying, there are people that have been prepared. You've been Pre being prepared. tested for, for this. this time. This is the time of your appearing. You are gonna have the answers for the things we're going to walk through because you've already been where we're going. Listen, you're gonna wanna stay tuned. You are gonna be so blessed. But listen, while we take a short break, I wanna let you know we have a free gift for you called God Is My Source by Pastor Gloria Copeland. I want you to call in. If this show has been a blessing to you and you've already been blessed so far, dial the phone 888-665-4483. Let the prayer partner know that you would like this book, we're going to send it right to you and let them know also that you've enjoyed Signs of the Time. We're going to take a short break and we're going to be right back for more Signs of the Times. Here at the Flight 93 Memorial in Somerset County, there is great testimony given to the faithfulness of Almighty God. That's right. Because you see, it was on this flight that had been rerouted on its way to the Power Center of America in Washington that the passengers began to pray. Led by Todd Beamer, he began with the Lord's Prayer and then went into the 23rd Psalm. And all of the passengers were just saying to God, yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil because God, we know that you are with us. Thank you, dear God. And no matter what your circumstance is today, no matter what your challenge, what your heartache or your pain, we need not be afraid. Because, yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, God is with us. Well, we're really about to go in on this because I believe the devil is nervous and there is a blessing, there is a window of opportunity that God has you positioned for. You know, Pastor Connie, you had mentioned about Joseph and how so he was 16 when he received the dream. Mm -hmm. God knew when he was 16 how he needed to prepare him 
for this moment. Can you just kind of, I, I, when you said that, it just jumped out at me of like, wait a minute. We don't even realize sometimes why we're in yeah. what we're in and how this window of opportunity, what we're about to come into is gonna make everything we've been through yeah. make sense. That's why we can't complain when we're being tested because the test is a part of the process. Mm. And when Joseph got thrown into the pit, he could have become angry and bitter and walked away. He got sold into slavery. He could have been mad about that, then got into jail. And, but if you notice every part of it was to God doing something in him. Wow. to prepare him for where he was going. Even when he got to prison and they forgot him, after they said they would remember him, they forgot him. And so many times people are going through things right now and they're wondering, why me? Yeah. Why am I being yeah. tested? Why did I have to go through cancer? Why did I have to go through this? Or why did I have to go through that? It was to mature you, it was to grow you up, it was to establish your mm. faith because every promise of God is conditional, it's positional and it's geographical. You, are you where you are when, when God promises you something? Yeah. Or is there a shift that needs to take place into where God wants you to go? And then God's promises are conditional. God says, I'll do this, you do this. Am I in the place where God wants me to be to mm. see what God is doing? So God works behind the scenes to mature me. There's things that yeah, I yeah. know now, Pastor Jay, that a few years I didn't know because I didn't understand all that God was doing. But now I see the hand of God. I see the, the collaboration that he's doing, the people that he's bringing into your sphere of influence for what he's about to do. So God has been working. For many years, I tried to leave the city of Pittsburgh and I was like, God, I love the warm. I want to be in Florida by the beach. <laughs> and I'm, the Lord said, but there's three rivers in the city of Pittsburgh that is going to be impactful in the latter day move of mm. God. So just like Joseph, God is working with me in my frustration, wanting to leave, but God is saying, no, there's a move. I brought you here for a purpose mm -hmm. and that purpose is being established. And so in the process of getting that purpose to be, God is working on my maturity, my growth, my yeah, faith. Yeah, and yeah. that's the same thing he did with Joseph. So by the time he becomes an administrator at 46, he can now let go his brothers. He can even say to them, you didn't do this to me. You, you, you weren't the, you're not the reason that I Come went on. through this, 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 Come and on. this. You can look at that person that walked away from you and said, no, no, don't, don't be angry. Yeah. You walked away, but God had a plan. Mm. You couldn't go where I was wow. going. So those, the people out there that are hurting, that yeah. are disappointed, yeah. that have gone through a divorce, someone walked away, someone hurt them, and they're thinking, what have I done? No, they can't go where you're going. Mm. They're not a part of your future. They will not stand when you become a great administrator Come because on. they don't deserve it. They couldn't walk through the process with you. So those that are going through all these testing times, don't look at it as God's mad or the devil. It's a part of my process to make me into the greatest person that God wants me to be. I've got to learn to evolve in becoming the greatest me yeah. that God wants me to be. And that happens through testing. Wow, you know, as you're talking, I was thinking about Joseph and I believe there's many people that are watching right now because when you said, said, why me? And there's many of you that are watching, they're saying, why me, why did I go? And you were going through, now hear me well. Yes. I, heard you, I hope you heard the prophet here. You have been going through all of these things and everybody else was okay. Because you know how it is, Pastor. You know, a lot of times you're going through and you're like, why is the devil picking on me? You lose your job, everybody else is getting promoted. Yeah. You lose, your car breaks down, someone else gets a new one. Right. You're single for 45 years, it's, everybody in 45, and, and everybody gets, <laughs> yeah, got two husbands. <laughs> Everybody's getting blessed. But I hear the Spirit of the, the Lord, Lord saying, the season is changing. changing. When everybody was watching you go through, and they were going up, God says, I'm turning it now that people are gonna watch you go up and you're gonna have the answers for everybody that's going through. Going and through. isn't that what happened to Joseph? He yes. went through the pit, yes. he went to Potiphar's house, he's falsely accused of rape, thrown into the prison, but everywhere he went, he learned to dig himself out of a famine. Yes. Do you believe that God has been using these times yes. to prepare people so then we will now, the body of Christ, will have the answers and the wisdom for the recession we're currently in? Absolutely. God, this, God has no surprises. It's not like he wakes up and there's a surprise. When you look at Joseph's life, that's one thing. You see how God orchestrated every area of his life. Yeah, yeah. And then you see the change of heart. Mm. You, you don't see that little boy is 16 that couldn't wait to boast to every bond about his dream. <laughs> and they'd met everyone hating. But not only that, his dad gave him a coat. His coat was prophetic. His coat mm. 
represented all the nations that he would reach. If you wow. remember, it was wow. a coat wow. of many colors. Wow. And what that coat represented is that, Joseph, you were never just called to a city. You are called to nations. Mm. And God is going to take you through nations, but going through the nations is going to cost you something. Wow. And so his own father mantled him with a prophetic mantle that you would reach nations. And once he got that mantle on him, his desk, it just began to just pen right out all the way to Egypt. Mm. And that is so important for us to understand. Yeah. God had already mantled him for where he was going. Mm -hmm. and the nations he would reach. When he got to um, Egypt, he wasn't just dealing with the Jews. He was dealing with every person in the world that needed food. Egypt was the bread basket. The mm -hmm. church is the bread basket of the world. Mm -hmm. We are God's source because God is the source. Yeah. And we're now the resource that God is using. And we've got to learn to collaborate because as Pastor Giles said, there's a transference of wealth. I just yeah. said to someone yesterday, that was saying to me how um, he's gone through a divorce and he couldn't understand, Pastor, why I'm gone through. I said, you know what's happening also? Men that have been mistreated and have been not been well and have not been taken care of, God is even transferring in relationships. Wow. Women wow. who have not been treated wow. well. God is not just transferring monies. That's good. Come He's on. transferring Come on. relationships. Ooh. So you may say, oh, that person was married twice and they never had a husband because God used them to prepare him for you. Mm. Because <laughs> God is transferring not just wealth, but if you look at everything else, there's a transference of relationships taking wow. place because God is the source of everything. God said, I'll give you the desires of your heart. He wouldn't promise you that and don't fulfill what you asked him. Mm. And so we're seeing a great move of God like never before. And God is giving people an opportunity to get it right. Yeah. Because once you get into that level of leadership, you don't have time to fix it then. You can't fix it then. No, you've got right. to be prepared. When he got to be an administrator, he could not have jealousy and anger yeah. and bitterness. All of the things, he had to have been healed. Yeah. He had to wow. learn how to let go quickly. He had to learn after they betrayed him, then he gets to prison. Here comes the butler and the baker forgetting him again. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so he could have been angry there, but he kept on working. And the Bible says, and God was with him. God was with him. And that's what we have to understand. No matter what you face in this season, God is with you because there's a greater purpose and a greater destiny being ordained for you right now. Mm. Don't let your pain Come on. stop you from yeah. fulfilling your promise. Every promise is, is always conditional. It's always got a position. Where have God positioned you for this promise? And you've got to remember promises are geographical. He said mm. he started out in, in Israel, but look at where he wound up in Egypt. Yeah. The promise yeah. of the fulfillment of the promise was still Egypt. It, the word came here, but the manifestation wasn't here. Mm. You know, as you're talking, I sense that this is the season for the manifestation. You know, I, I go back to a, what Apostle Giles was saying or what yeah. you're saying. And, you know, as you're talking about the coats, the revelation come back to me about Joseph had three jackets he wore. Actually, technically he had mm -hmm. four. He had the one with the coat of many colors. But when they threw him into the pit, it got stripped off. Yes. And then when he went to Potiphar's house, his wow. Potiphar's wife stripped that off him. him. He put on a new one when he went into the prison. prison. And the Bible says he took, took that off, off in order to go to Get Pharaoh. And then he was wrapped with Magic a robe. robe. Come on. Yes. I believe this is the season that those that have been prepared. Are y'all hearing oh, what my, we're my, saying my, today? My, my. This is a season that you, you take off the coat, forget everything from the pit, forget yes. everything from Potiphar's house in the prison. God's about to wrap you in the robe of the calling of the destiny. There is a new anointing that's getting ready to come upon your life. And I believe that leads us right into Genesis 26. Absolutely. That this is the time that we are in the middle of a famine. Talk to us about how the famine recession, uh, inflation, how they're all the same. To me it is because what happens is it really talks about this when it comes to recession. It's an economic downcline. Something's happening in, a, in about two or three quarters. They determine we're going into a recession. A recession is nothing new for God. When you go That's into right. the Bible, you see famine, which is very also the same thing. An economic downcline. Things are not as um, producing like it usually is. When you get to Genesis chapter 26, the Bible opens up. There's a famine in the land. 
God takes one man, Isaac, and he says to him, don't go to Egypt. Now, you see, Egypt. you see, Joseph goes to Egypt, but he says to Isaac, you don't go to Egypt. Yeah, right. You stay right here in Jura, yeah. and I'm going to go with you. Yeah. And so he's staying right there, but there's a famine in the land. But what gets me excited about that is that God had positioned him. Mm. Your breakthrough is yeah, you stay him. here. Yeah. Yeah. You don't go down to the yeah. world system looking to fix this. Mm. You stay right here and I'm going to go with you. We saw that even in the pandemic. We lost over 300,000 people in the pandemic, but the church is still here. Mm. Come on. We are still here. still here. We're still here. Yeah. And, and God has blessed us in the pandemic. There's some of us that increased in the pandemic yes. instead of decreasing. Indeed. When I speak to people during the pandemic, they prospered. Yeah. Our church did better in the pandemic than when people were coming to church before. Wow. Because wow. people were scared. They were frightened. They wanted to obey God. They wanted to fix it. So those that weren't tithing were making sure they tithed because they yeah. didn't know what was yeah. going on. Right. And so we saw this move of God. And it's the same thing when you look at Genesis 26. The Bible says God promised him, I'm going to go with you. And he begins to move forward in the things that God has called him to do in Genesis 26. But then you hit strife and envy. Yeah. You don't ever think that in walking with God it's going to be easy. Right. There's wow. always something right. that wants to pop off, the, you know, to get you off track or to get you out of the will of God. And as the famine is increasing in the land, the Bible says that he began to dig wells. And when he gets to a certain area, here comes envy. Yeah. But what I love, Pastor, he left the wells for them. He left the wells for them. When people hurt us and wound us, the first thing we want to do is shut down, ignore them. How about God calling you to bless those who have despitefully used you, those who have wounded you, those who have brought envy and strife into your life? Here now God says to you, feed them. Wow. Feed them. Wow. That's, wow. What the, that's what the church has to do. We have to learn to let go the things of yesterday, the strife, who left our church and who joined another church well, and who did this. That's not even relevant. Here's what God is saying to you, feed them. Yeah. I've blessed you, yeah. now you be a blessing. Mm. And so you watch him, he moved on, dug another well. Here comes another opposition, but he never stops to argue or fight over the well. You don't have time. You, you're going somewhere. And you've mm -hmm. got to get to a place where you understand everything I have, I'm, I'm a steward. Everything I own belongs to God. Amen. I'm not going to fight over a well. Just imagine if he had stopped uh, in one of those wells and decided I'm not going to move from here. I'm going to argue with these men and I'm going to take my well back. He would have never gotten to his well birth. He would have never gotten. And that's what the enemy wants us to do. Stop and argue and fight and bicker among ourselves. Miss the collaboration. Miss the fact that together we can do more than by ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in coming and working with you on the on the set, a few a few about a year ago, a few months ago, I didn't know Pastor Jay. No, we didn't. But then look at the collaboration yeah. of what God is doing, even in our lives, and just just gleaning from you the nuggets that God has shared, and we see what God wants to do in the recession. It's the same way here. God takes this man through this journey, and the Bible says, and he became great. He became great. And he st didn't stop there, and became very great. Yeah. This is what God will do mm. in the middle of a recession, is raising up his people to do great and mighty things for him. The Bible said he sowed a seed in that year, and in that year, in the time of famine, Majority of time when you hear famine, nobody wants to give. Nobody wants to give. They want to hold on. I'm going to hold on to everything I have. But what they don't realize, the only voice that a harvest responds to is that of a seed. Wow. There is never a harvest without wow. a seed. So the time you do want to sow is in preparation for the recession. Mm. So that even in the middle of a recession, God has to honor his word because seeds are in the ground. Mm. And, mm. and you're going to prosper whether there's a recession, there's a famine, whatever you want to name it never lacking. We, I built a home in the middle of, of our pandemic. Wow. I've watched God. We paid off our church in the wow. middle of all that's going on. on. God shows you is I am your source, not the world, not who's in the White House, not the political arena. I am your source. Mm. And I say it all the time. The kingdom of God has outlived 45 presidents. The kingdom of God have outlived over 13 pandemics. The kingdom of God has outlived recessions before, 1945 to 1949 recession. We're still yeah. here. 
We're still, well, you know what's amazing? You, you, now, you listen, you just preached a whole sermon in that. <laughs> I got to go back and unpack some of this because, you know, something that you said, all of it is all good. Uh, but what you said earlier, and I think a lot of people need to grasp this, the two people that God used the greatest in the analogies we're talking about, you think of Joseph and you think of Isaac. Yes. They both had to labor for the people that did them wrong. Can I take a minute, oh ladies and gentlemen, I need you to understand, many people are gonna disqualify themselves because they've, they've ingested the venom of the backbiting. They've ingested the venom of the things that have done. You've allowed the, the, the bites and the wounds you received to fester Jesus. and to develop a spiritual gangrene in your life, not understanding that is the devil's plan to disqualify you from Rehoboth, which is what we're going to talk about in a minute, where Isaac eventually gets to. You cannot allow the envy and the strife. Look, Joseph's brothers yes. threw him in the pit. Yes. Potiphar's wife. What? threw him into, falsely accused him, him of a rape. I mean, the butler forgets about him. I mean, all of his life, Joseph makes an impact in his brothers. He makes Potiphar's house better. He's constantly doing for other people, but every time he finds out something's bad. Let me ask you a question. Yes. Can you do the right thing Thanks. even when you get the wrong results? Oh my my good God yes. almighty. Because many people only want to do right thinking, well, I'll do it as long as I get what I want what? when I want. But let me say this. I I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, there are many of you that are watching right now that people have done you wrong, wrong. people yes. have hurt you, and you've done the right thing, but God says they are not your source. They are not the ones that are going to bless you, but the Spirit of the Lord is saying, I have kept the books, and I am going to bless you for such a time as this. Do not look to man for your reward, for it is not man that is going to reward you, for it is not man that has put you where you've been. Man is not the one that ordered your steps, uh, but it is I, the Lord, that has ordered your steps, and in this season, the same God that ordered your steps into the pit, uh, the same God that ordered your steps into Potiphar's house, yes. the same God that ordered your steps into yes. the prison, is the same God that is ordering your steps to be before Pharaoh in this season, but do not allow those uh, that have hurt you and wounded you to allow those wounds to fester, fester. but God's saying, in this season, yes. I will put favor and blessing in your life. Do not look to man and do not look to those that have hurt you for it is not them that is going to bless you but it is I and those that have hurt you are the ones that you are going to bless. Jesus. I am not going to bless them but mm -hmm. I am going to bless you and you are going to bless them says the Lord. My God. I sense in my spirit right now yes, yes, the yes. power of God Pastor Connie yes. that many people do not understand that those Isaacs, I feel the glory Jesus. of God yes, yes. those Isaacs he mm -hmm. was digging wells for those that were envious against him, yes. those that were Our jealous. Strife. But isn't that just like God. Jesus? My God. He my died God. for a people. I don't mean to preach. I'm no, sorry. No, no, I feel the no, Holy No, no, go ahead. Let him use you. The, the, the <laughs> Lord was the same way, though. Yes. He died for a bunch of people that didn't Did, deserve it. Deserve and this it. is the opportunity, opportunity for the body of Christ to be the greatest demonstration of the love of Christ to become the breadbasket for the world. Absolutely. Because of the fact people are hurting mm. and they need the church. That's why we, we were not created to just have a service. We are oh. to be the bread basket. We are able to mm. forgive. We are able to let go. Oh, we are able to be able to sow. We are able to be able to have our oh, churches. Oh, what you and your wife are doing, starting a program that help young women mm. that are going through something. Thank this you. is what we were created to do. And we have wasted so many times with closed buildings and closed relationships, but it's our time. It is our time. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand God is moving right now. There are many of you that have been digging wells like Isaac. And I think about Joseph and all that he went through, Pastor Connie, every person that did him wrong, he had to bless. Everyone. Potiphar's Everyone. house, he had to bless his family, family during that time. His brothers ended up coming back to him. Man, I feel the glory yes. of God right now. Listen, there are people, if you have the right heart in this That's season, it. God is going to send back the very people that did you wrong that are going to need you. N not in a way of, look at y'all needed me, you did me wrong. No, not no, like you can't that. be elevated like that. No, no, no. You can only be elevated when you've got the right heart. And that's what Joseph did, didn't he, Pastor Connie? Yes, he said, he you meant it for evil, evil but, but God. God meant it for our good. That's it.
And mm. that's what we have to understand. You are going through all of that to take all of the carnality out of you, to mm. take all of the stuff out of you, mm. so that when God gets you to that place, humility is what goes with you, caring and love. Because he said the greatest commandment is love. And that's what God wants us to give to one another. We've got to get wow. the ego and all of that out of the way, the arrogance, Come Come and on. say, listen, I love my brother. I love my sister. I know what you said, but that doesn't matter now. We need to feed you. We need to walk you through deliverance. Do you know how many, because I work in a ministry of deliverance, how many people have walked mm -hmm. away from me in years mm -hmm. and I've come back to my church and the Lord said to me, they need deliverance. They need to walk through healing. And I said, but God, they left me. And, and he's like, come you on. have to answer the call upon your life. Mm -hmm. Those people need you right now. And that's what God is doing to the church. We have to let go the past to become wow. everything God calls us. With. We have to evolve into being more like Christ mm -hmm. and we've got to willing to pivot. We've got to do Come it on the drop of a hat without trying to figure it out, think it out, but show the love of God because that's who he is and that's who he expects us to be. And Pastor Connie, you know, think of uh, it, it, those people that have done the people wrong, that have hurt and set them back, did all those things. If they can't deal with the bitterness the right way, right and serve them in the bitterness, they'll never serve the people, people when they get the glory on them. No, absolutely. And pastor, we can't use our pulpit as a place to cut. Wow. We can't, you, we can't take on. our anger and our bitterness and our frustration and who left our church and who did this to us to the pulpit. We've got to be mm. pouring in the wine and the oil into the people. We've got to pour into the lives of the people. They are hurting. They, they, they weren't matured enough. They, they didn't know any better. And so now that we are the leaders who have come through our own healing and our own deliverance and watch how God preserved us and kept us even when we blew it, when we made mistakes, God still used us. Come on. And now he's saying to us, do the same thing for someone else. Be a blessing to someone else. And I think that's what we're seeing happening in the, in the wow. church today. This recession is going to bring out the best of God in his church. Wow. Because wow. It's, it was all about him in the first place. Mm. Do you understand, ladies and gentlemen, where you are right now in this moment? that God is trying to position you for the greatest blessing. That's why you have gone through, and I, I sense people right now just weeping under yes. the power of God because we're speaking right to you. where you are. You have been hurt, you've been broke, busted, and disgusted. You've pulled knives out of your back. People have lied on you, they've mistreated you. You've given your heart to people and they wounded you because the devil is hoping to destroy that heart. And I hear the Lord saying, it is that heart that I've given you of why I'm going to promote you. Mm -hmm. It was your heart from the get-go and you trusted people and they hurt you. Mm -hmm. You reached out to people and they hurt you. You served people and they took advantage of you. But God's saying, if you can realize that that's the exact same way that I was, I laid down my life for a people that Jesus. didn't deserve it. And if you will serve those people in this season, the anointing that was on Joseph, that Rehoboth blessing is going to come into your life in a supernatural way. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, the power of God is here. Mm. There is a divine reversal that is happening. And we're going to take a short break here for just a moment. And we're going to come back for more with Pastor Connie Brooks as we discuss what God is getting ready to do in this recession. How he's going to take you from the back door and place you before great kings in this season. Hope happens here. With the very best in inspirational programming, start your new season with Cornerstone Television Network. God will go ahead of you. God will prepare the way. God will change the heart of the other person. God will do things that will absolutely surprise you. Find hope for a better day and sample the best of local Christian TV on Cornerstone Television Network. The anointing and the power of God is here on Signs of the Times. We're here with Pastor Connie Brooks. I feel such a weight of the anointing right now. My good God, there's a shift that is happening. There's an anointing that is falling right now in your living room, in that hospital room. I'm telling you, you are in miracle territory Jesus. right now that God is doing a divine. You are in a Kairos moment 
in this season that God is stepping in. There's a divine interruption that is happening in your life. You've been walking down a certain journey and in the middle of this recession, God is stepping in right now, Pastor Connie, and telling people, this is the moment that I'm getting ready to do some new things. Will you just take a minute and just minister to the people in their homes as the Spirit of the Lord leads you? I, I was just saying to Pastor Jay, I heard someone say in the Spirit, why did I have to go through cancer? So why did I have to go through a divorce? Why did I have to go through this? You're asking yourself the why, why? Can you imagine that Isaac got and the wells were being clogged up or the envy and the strife? He could have stopped there and said, well, why am I going through this? God said he's with me. God told me to stay here. Why did I, am I, why am I going through this? I'm in obedience to God. Because everything you go through is a part of where you're going. Mm. It's making you who you are. It's delivering you. You don't even know sometimes oh, what you're being delivered shot. from. And so if right now where mm. you are, you say, God, forgive me for complaining. Mm. Forgive me. The Bible said, do everything without murmuring and complaining. Mm. I promise you, if you say right now to God, God, forgive me for complaining and murmuring about what I'm going through. I lost my job and other people had their job. God, Here's what God say, I have a better job for you mm. and more. I, a young lady at my church was saying to me the other day that she needed a job. I said, by the end of August, you'll have one. And she called me and she said, Pastor, I got the job and I got the money that I wanted. We've got to understand when you lose something, God has something greater mm. coming for you. He walked away from the well in Sitna. He walked away from Essex, but there was a Rehoboth coming. Mm. What I don't want to do Pastor Jay is Miss Myra Hoboth by being angry and wow. bitter and frustrated at life and church and people when there's a major move coming. This recession was not created in, in a, just a drop of, God knew it was coming. Yeah. And what he's saying, I am going to use it to transfer the wealth. I'm going to use mm. it to push you into your Rehoboth wow. because if I didn't do it, you would remain stuck and I need you to get where I have you to be because you are going to be the bread basket. You are going to supply the foods. You are going to be able to minister. In the middle of the pandemic, we fed 200 families every week. Wow. Because wow. God told us to partner with the Heart Association. We did it and we were able to feed families. God is going to tell his leaders mm. what to do. Mm. But we've got to, you said something this morning, calling leaders to pray and fast, they don't want to do that. They don't want to do, it. They don't want to do that. No. But that's where you're going to learn the voice of God and yeah. what to do for your church. It's mm. time out for three songs and, and a, a message. And it's time out for getting in the pulpit broken and hurt yeah. and wounded and spewing our bitterness. It's wow. time to heal the nation so that the people are prepared and ready to walk through this recession and get their transference of wealth to get the things that they've always wanted to do but could never afford to do. And you know, Pastor Connie, do you believe also that many people that are going through this time, that everything that they have gone through was for the purpose of teaching them their Rehoboth, their time in front of Pharaoh, it's not about us. No. It's not, you know, a lot of time we're like, how do I get my car? How do I get my breakthrough? So when you're in uh, uh, Essex, when you're in Sitna, God's burning all of that out. So out then when you. he really promotes you, you understand, first of all, you ain't that cute. No. Because you've repented on every, every single thing. one of those times. You realize that anointing ain't yours. No. That blessing is not yours. And that in the midst of us and our brokenness and frailty as human beings, we are called to serve one another. And what I'm sensing, Pastor Connie, maybe you could speak more to this, is that there are many people that have walked through all of that, that God wants them to see that it wasn't ever about them, just like Joseph knew. Not at all. It was never about them, and neither is this next level. It's about us ministering to the world. So this recession is a setup for those that have been processed that understand it's not about themselves, but it's about serving the world with the love of Jesus Christ. Pastor, you have to understand, we had come to a place even before the pandemic where preachers wouldn't come to a church that was small because they couldn't pay them. Wow. There were leaders that would not wow. come and, and bring your gift that God gave you. Bring the message that God gave you to a church because they only had 50 members and you don't preach anywhere unless you get 10,000, 20,000, would not come. Wow. Now there's no churches hiring nobody. There's no yeah. churches yeah. having them now because yeah. there's no money to give you that yeah. to you now. That's over. That season has come yeah. to an end. Yeah. God shut everything down. Mm. 
I, I mean, those are the things that we have to understand. God is moving because God needs the word to get to everyone. Amen. The giftings, your gift will bring you before kings, but you've got to start somewhere. You can't overlook the 50 because you want 50,000. Yeah. That 50 yeah. also needs the word. How do you know there was not one leader in that 50 wow. that was going to impact the whole world? Amen. If I Amen. choose where I take my gifts, if I choose where I bring deliverance to, if I can't come to you because, you know, you can't pay me enough, what about that little boy wow. in that congregation that's the next Pastor Jay? Where's that little boy that's the next T.D. Jakes yeah. or a Bishop Giles? Who will bring that word to him mm -hmm. of deliverance mm -hmm. if the prophets choose where they're going to prophesy? Wow. Wow. The Bible says the prophets and the priests are in bed together. We can't collaborate and keep the word away from every. The people need the word, Pastor. Amen. We have got to come together and bring the word to the people so they're ready for this recession, that the people are strong, their giftings are elevated, they're doing great and mighty things, Pastor. We cannot keep the word of God from the people. We've got to get it to them, get them energized, tell somebody you're going to make it. You've gone through this yeah. because of God getting ready to use you mightily. We've got to share it. And I think in this recession is too, there's many people that are, that are watching right now. You know, we've had this mentality of the superstar minister. You know, you've got the big entourage and 50 people coming in. They come in 45 minutes late and they're not ready and they're not, they can't be touched and can't be around the people and all that stuff. You're right. I think in 2020, God got rid of all of that. And now he's putting, listen, the people that are going to be elevated in this season are the people that care about the one. Yes. God has dealt with me. Wow even in my own world, about the one. one. You know, listen, we have gauged, I, I, I feel the Holy Ghost in here Jesus. today. You know, whenever you show up, <laughs> you, the whole thing just goes out the window. <laughs> I love it though. I love it. I mean, we need more of this. We just don't want to hear what God is saying. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what this show is about. What is God saying right now? What is he saying in the moment? And God began to deal with me saying, we have gauged ministry growth by numerics. Yeah. Yeah. It is wrong. wrong because if that's the case, when the 5,000 left Jesus, he failed. Jesus. God is not looking. Hear, me, hear this preacher well. Yes. God is not looking for numbers. He's looking for fruit. fruit. Oh he God. gauges. See, we are gauging it by the numbers of people. I would watch this. I would rather have 10 people with 50,000 pieces of fruit hanging off their tree than 50,000 people with 50 pieces of fruit. fruit Jesus didn't say you'd know them by their numbers. He said, you will know them by their fruit. But this is what I realized, Pastor Connie. If we change lives, numbers will come. Absolutely. If you change, people Absolutely. want to be the best, be best themselves that they Absolutely. can be. Absolutely. We've got to get back to ministering to people, Absolutely. even in this recession, is the opportunity to meet their needs and be a blessing Pastor, to them. Pastor, I went to Florida on vacation. I was on vacation. I was telling Sister Sydney, I went to Florida on vacation. I found 80 children that had no book bags, not ready for school, drove into their neighborhood. The crack, the prostitution, I had never experienced that before in my life. And so someone said to me, well, it's in Pittsburgh. Why did it affect you like that? I never saw it. But once God showed it to me, I knew I had to do something. Mm. I came back. Wow. I, I, my, my assistant took all the book bags and things, uh, bath and body products. We shipped it. When God shows you something, it's for you to do something mm. because he's Come given on. you the money to Come do on. it. And like I said, if you want more um, of a harvest, you've got to plant more seeds. Yeah. We yeah. took the book bags down. We took the food down. We, we sent water, juices. We realized, Pastor, they were struggling and the church has to become the bread basket. We've it's got so to good. do something when we see something yeah. and we can't just walk away from it and act like we didn't see it. Yeah. And that's what God is bringing us to, into that place of Rehoboth where we're not just taking for ourselves, mm -hmm. but we have been fully prepared now to be a blessing. God God never blessed us just to bless our four and no more. Yeah, We've yeah. got to become the bread basket. We've got to minister and pour out to all those. That's what Joseph did. Yeah. That's what Isaac did. Isaac kept on moving, kept on growing, kept on feeding everyone that he left mm. there in Jura. That whole town was fed. Yeah. Everyone there was fed all because he allowed them to keep those wells and he did not take them and fight over them. He kept on moving because he knew there was a bigger well coming. You know, as you're talking, it's so powerful because I think that's the key to unlocking this wealth transfer. 
See, I, and I have to be honest, we've all thought it probably. Some, I'll, I'll speak to myself. We've all thought, like, you know, you're going to get this big wealth transfer and have all these zeros in your bank account. And, and you know, it's all right because that's what it is. But the reason why we wanted it is changing. Yeah. And I believe in this recession, there are more troubles that are coming. Apostle Giles said it. Yes. The economic systems are going to tank. Tank. Why? God, mm, Jesus. he has prepared a people that are ready to receive. Some of you, you said something earlier. You said, some of you, I don't even know what you're being delivered from. Sometimes we're in the middle of the fire. We don't even know what's I being burned no out clue. of us. <laughs> we have no idea. But God does. God does. And he has prepared a people. Yes. And I believe you're watching right now because you have been prepared because you are going to start seeing things in the earth in the recession. When the money tanks, when the economy tanks, there are problems everywhere. And guess who's going to show, show up? up? The church of the living God that has been processed like Joseph 30 years, years. prior for such a time as this, it's, Pastor Connie. It is. And it's exactly that. Pastor Jay, you're not in Pittsburgh by accident. Mm. Pittsburgh is one, going to be one of the greatest movers God in the world. When the Lord said to me, in this city where the three rivers meet, there was going to be a major move of God. Like I said, I've tried to ask God, why can't I just go somewhere warm and live? Yeah. And the Lord said, this is where <laughs> the move of God is coming. This is wow. where I have you here. And so all the time when you're going through the process of coming to Pittsburgh or you've been going through all the tests to be here and you're like, God, why Pittsburgh? And all of a sudden you'll begin to see now yeah. the revelation of why God has brought you here because it was for such a time as this. Mm -hmm. You are going to be such a, a catalyst of drawing leaders together for the next move of God mm -hmm. because you are concerned about prayer. You're concerned about fasting. You're concerned about collaboration. Let's do this together. It's not about you anymore. It's about the kingdom of God and he wants us to do it together, working together to make the kingdom of God visible so that people can attain it. They can go after it, not a church, yeah. not a building, yeah, 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 but yeah, we're yeah. a part of the kingdom of God. And God is going to use, whether it's like Joseph or Isaac, you're going to stand before great kings mm. because he can trust you. And that's what you've been going through at home. Oh, you have been tested. You've been going through. And God can trust you in this season to do what God has called you to do. Your business is going to be restored. Your health is going to be restored. If you lay hands on your body right now, you're going to feel mm. the miracle of God. Come God, on. you have been waiting for such a time as this to see the move of God. Don't be worried. Don't complain. Don't be dismayed about the fact that you've had to go through this. Yes, you lost a spouse. Yes, you went through through some things. You have suffered losses, but you're going to be able to tell someone, but I got up again. God brought me mm, through. God took me through. And look at it. There's nobody that can restore like God. Mm. Nobody. The Bible says he is a restorer and God wants to restore. The Bible says there's going to come a day of great recompense of reward. There's a payday coming for each and every one of you who have gone through that testing time, that hard time. But now you know why have you been going through it? There is a Rehoboth. There is a place where you're going to stand before kings. You will not be going through this alone. God is with you. He was with Joseph. He was with Isaac. And he is with you. Pastor Connie, we wouldn't even still be here if God wasn't with us. The after fact that, that you're after the pandemic and all the stuff we've been through. And listen, there are many, you're still here and you're in your right mind. You know, as many people that have hurt you, you should be better. But for whatever reason, you still love us. And you know what I heard the Lord say? There is a Rehoboth in the recession. Absolutely. There's a Rehoboth in the recession. This is the turning point of what God is doing. Listen, see, we've got this whole thing about the whole focus is off. Yes. And in, even in my own world, the reason why we did the pregnancy center, I was actually here at Cornerstone. And some things were going on here at Cornerstone and God was shifting my season and had the things coming up with the pregnancy center. And in order to get this pregnancy center off the, uh, off the ground, we had to take some time away from here. And I'm on my way home after having a meeting. said, I need to take a little bit of time away. And I said, God, the pregnancy center wasn't even on my radar. Jesus. You know what the Lord said to me? He said, that's the problem. Yes. The things that are on my heart are not on my people's heart. God. The things that are important, the reason why I'm blessing my church Jesus. is not why the people want the blessing. But what's happening right now is people are beginning to get a heart 
for the things that grieve the heart of God. And this recession is going to be used to pull out of the people that have been prepared for such a time as this, the things that God has worked in them. And if you have been going through and you are still here, the anointing of Rehoboth is coming upon your life because you are going to be used as a vessel to minister in this end time harvest. Now listen, we are going to take another short break. I know we keep breaking in the action, but you know if we leave you wanting more, you'll be back for more. Come back and we're going to share some of our final takeaways and we're going to minister to you as the Spirit of the Lord leads on how you can continue to thrive in this recession. God's got a great plan for you. Stay tuned for more. We've only got a little bit of time left. And listen, we're going to minister to you for the time that we have left. I want you to call in, get this book, God is My Source by Gloria Copeland. Free gift for just calling in. And let us know if this show has been a blessing to you and how it's made an impact. You know, Pastor Connie, as we're closing up here, I just want you to take a minute. However the Lord leads you, you just minister to the people of God as the Lord sees fit. My God. Only thing I kept hearing the Lord said, walk in obedience to me. That's what's critical right now. Walk in obedience to God, forgive, repent, whatever you need to do. Get a line so that when God comes, he is ready to bless you and there's no blockage. Mm. Don't let anything block you in this season. No envy, no strife, mm. no bitterness. Some of you have been in disagreement with your family. Some of you have been in disagreement in your marriage, in your job. Right now, take time, ask God to forgive you, repent of it, get yourself positioned for what God is about to do. Don't let anything cause you to miss your blessing in this season. It's so critical, Pastor, yeah. that we let go the things we need to let go. Do not allow anything to block us from yeah. our blessings. And sometimes some, I just felt like somebody had been holding something. They were hurt, they were wounded, and they don't know how to let it go. This is a good time to let it go because God wants to move. I just see God moving on your house. I know you're going to call the studio, and I believe in my heart that there's breakthrough coming come for on, your house, that you forgive them right now. Somebody was molested as a child. Somebody was raped. Just like we see in the word of God. Just look at all that Joseph had went through. Look at all when, when, the, when Potiphar's wife took his coat and accused him of something he didn't do. You have been accused of something. We have somebody sitting in prison today that didn't do it. And now God is saying, but I'm bringing you out. I am bringing you out with a high hand. And so today I ask you as we for prophet prophesy over yes. you. Live and not die. Yeah. Live. Do you know how you make the enemy mad? Live when Live. he wanted you to die. Live and declare the whole counsel of God. Declare what God has brought you out of. Declare the testimony of God. I went through something, but God's brought me out. The doctors, one of my assistants was just telling us in the back, the doctors told him he was going to die that night. He said, not tonight. I know I'm going to die, but not tonight. Mm. You need to tell the enemy, not today, not on my watch. I am going to see the blessings of the God, and I'm going to walk in my Rehoboth. I am going to stand before kings, my gift is about to open doors. I understand clearly now why I've been through what I've been through because God is doing a great and mighty work and nothing is impossible for my God. You need to get up from there right now. Make the call and say, listen, I just need them at the station just to pray for me and we pray right now for the blessings of the Lord to overtake you. Thank you so much, Pastor Connie, for this word and for this anointing that is on your life and I hope that you have been blessed and I want you to understand that there is a Rehoboth for you in this recession. All that you have been through has prepared you, Esther, has prepared you, Joseph, has prepared you for such a time as this. Remember that there is a Rehoboth in this recession.
Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.